Hello everyone, this is Anton and welcome to What The Math. Today we're going to be talking about Endor, the planet from the Return of Jedi. And we're going to be discussing, uh, or actually, it's I'm sorry, it's not a planet, it is a moon. There is a planet called Endor, but we're actually going to be talking about the moon of Endor that is in orbit around um, the star called Endor. Now, th there's actually a bit of a controversy here and we're going to talk about all of this and we're going to try to recreate all of this using Universe Sandbox 2. But I think, uh, first of all, I actually just wanted to show you where it is located in relation to other stars and other planets. So Endor is right here and uh, I'm just going to disable orbits and enable trails instead. Uh, we have Galactic Center right here. This is about 4,000 light years away from the Galactic Center. There's Coruscant right there. Bespin, Hoth, uh, we also have Dagobah, Mustafar, uh, and uh, Naboo is right there. And so Endor is sort of in a region that is um, a little bit away from the regular travel routes. As a matter of fact, it's not a very well-traveled planet. Not many people, not many uh, travelers stop here, mostly because, um, well, first of all, there's really nothing here. But second of all, it's actually uh, because of the gas giant called Endor. The Endor gas giant, which we're going to be recreating in one second, this is not a complete system yet. Uh, the Endor gas giant is unfortunately so massive that it does uh, disturb the, the travel pathways uh, when it comes to interstellar travel. And because of its mass, it's actually very easy to miscalculate and possibly smack into the star or even fly somewhere where you, you didn't expect to fly. And so not many people visit this planet. And for this reason, uh, Endor was chosen by the uh, Galactic Empire as the place where they would build their second Death Star because it was undisturbed and there was quite a lot of resources and materials in this particular system. So let's actually go into a completely new um, simulation here. And that is because I wanted to talk about two different things. One is the canon, Star Wars canon, and one is the uh, extended universe of the Star Wars universe. Now, in the extended universe, this is what the system looked like. This is actually from the extended universe that was actually still accepted up until um, mid-2014. After 2014, unfortunately, uh, the new uh, direction, the new uh, Star Wars, I guess you could call it management, and here we're talking about the people that basically are making Star Wars uh, Episode 7, 8, and 9, decided they're not going to uh, honor the extended universe anymore, and they basically said it doesn't actually uh, count anymore. It's not part of the Star Wars universe anymore. And so here, in, in and specifically in, in not in canon, in extended universe, the star was actually called Iblium. I-B-L-E-A-M. Uh, very interesting name. Um, and uh, Andor was the name of the gas giant that was uh, the closest to the star. There is Andor. Andor had nine moons, and um, most of the moons we don't really know the names of, but we do know two of them. One of them was called the Forest Moon of Andor. That's that's it right here. This was the only habitable uh, location in the entire system. And this is where Ewoks live. This is where many other sentient beings live. Uh, and here we're talking about uh, species like Dulox, Yuzum. And there's actually quite a lot of various species that ended up on this planet because they either got lost and crashed here and had to survive on it, or because it was just a very nice world to live on. It had forests. It had uh, very beautiful... Uh, lakes. Uh, actually, this is too much water. It's supposed to have only about 8% water on its surface. I'm going to re reduce that a little bit. It should be about 8% only. So and compared to Earth that has something like 73%, here it's only 8%. And basically most of this planet was um, f uh, very large forests. Uh, and these forests uh, consisted of really large red trees that we get to see in the movies. And I'm going to show you uh, near the end of the video what it looked like and how it was recreated in Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, but uh, here, yeah, we have these uh, uh, this beautiful planet that was inhabited by many species and specifically Ewoks. And then there was another pl uh, moon that we knew about, and this is actually what Ewoks worshipped. This was the sister moon of Endor. And unfortunately, sister moon, even though Ewoks thought had life on it, didn't really have anything. It was a very empty moon uh, filled with nothing. The rest of the moons, we don't really know what, what their names are. So these are all randomly generated. And this one actually looks kind of cool. Let's actually zoom into it. So it's all randomly generated by the game itself. Um, and so nine moons in total. And this was around the gas giant called Endor. And uh, after Endor, there were actually three more planets. And here we had a planet called Elogi. Or is that Elogai? I think it's Elogi. And um, this planet, uh, and actually all of the other planets in the system were also bare. There was nothing on them. Um, they were completely empty, devoid of life, but full of resources, which is why the Galactic Empire 
and this planet is called Megiddo, um, which is why uh, the Galactic Empire chose this uh, this particular location as the location to build their second Death Star. The last planet here is called Dor. Um, now, um, we're going to add the, the, the Death Star, and to do this, we're going to go zoom in here, zoom in on um, the forest moon of Andor, which is right here, and we're going to build uh, the Death Star. If you still don't know how to do that in uh, in um, Universe Sandbox 2, what you do is you go into uh, here and you type Mimus. Now, Mimus in real life actually does look like the Death Star. Here's a picture of Mimus, um, and we're going to just make it orbit around forest moon of Andor. There you go. There is our Mimus. And so, yeah, yeah, so this was where the Death Star was built. Unfortunately, here it doesn't actually look like that. But maybe one day they'll actually improve this and make it look more realistic. And so, um, as the Death Star was orbiting around the planet, on the surface there was a shield generator that would actually protect uh, the Death Star. And this is where the Emperor Palpatine wanted to lure the rebels. He actually specifically leaked the plans for this uh, Death Star number two, which is actually should be called Death Star number two. And here you go. And so he leaked the plans to the rebels because he wanted to lure them into this location and then destroy them with one sudden strike, which he almost succeeded, except that he didn't realize that Ewoks, the little Ewoks, little furry creatures were a lot more influential than anyone imagined. So they ended up actually defeating the uh, elite forces from the Empire. Many people don't really realize or don't understand how exactly that happened, but it happened. So Han Solo, Leia Organa, and of course the uh, uh, Chewbacca, and of course the uh, uh, Ewok forces, uh, technically controlled by 3CPO, who they thought was their god and their deity. Uh, would actually defeat the uh, forces on the ground and destroy the shield generator. Which of course uh, allowed the rebels to destroy the Death Star. And here this was a force uh, co-led and I guess led in a sense by Lando Calrissian who uh, basically jumped into the system and managed to destroy uh, most of the uh, Imperial forces around around this region. Now, what happened afterwards, and this is actually where uh, I guess you, you do get this information from the extended universe, but basically the debris from this particular uh, destroyed Death Star, and let's actually see if we can just explode it. We're gonna click on explode button and boom. There you go. Uh, so debris from the Death Star uh, and also the um, debris from all of the other spaceships in uh, in the vicinity basically created a kind of a almost like a ring around the forest moon of Endor that would just orbit um, around it for you know for eons afterwards uh, there was uh, one comic book that tried to mention that possibly a lot of the, the debris actually landed on the planet and destroyed the ecosystem on the planet but then it was also proven completely incorrect in one of the other following comic books that it was actually just a myth and not true but here we go, we are creating this beautiful debris ring that will start orbiting the forest moon of Andor. So don't forget, this is all from the extended universe. This is not canon anymore and is very likely not to be true in the future Star Wars movies either. Uh, so it's very likely that, that if we do see Andor or the forest moon of Andor, we'll see something completely different. But let's just wait for this ring to be finished because I would like to see what it looks like um, or basically what it would look like if this was actually still true. And I guess here you go, the ring has been completed. Death Star is still orbiting there too, uh, but that's okay. We're, we don't really care about it as much because it's it's been destroyed by the rebels. And the ring is actually slowly disappearing. I'm not sure why, but I guess that's just part of the game. And so, yeah, so this is what it would look like with the ring orbiting around the forest moon of Endor. And this is uh, essentially the how, how the system would look if it was still... Uh, uh, or if, if the legends, as they're called, if the extended universe material was still accepted now. Unfortunately, it's, it's not really accepted, so we have to recreate all of this again. So we're going to click on the new here, and let, let me show you what, uh, what is accepted in the canon. So this is what we know about Endor system so far. Well, first of all, we know that it is actually accepted to be a, a binary system. It's a binary star. There's Endor 1, which is the name of the first star, and Endor 2, a smaller star orbiting, uh, basically around the Berry Center that's somewhere right here, um, which is essentially how this system looks uh, in the accepted uh, canon that is 
going to be present in the future Star Wars. Uh, so the other thing that we know, and basically that's really the only other piece of information, is that, yes, there is a gas giant, and it's called Andor as well. And we don't really know if there's any other planets. We don't really know if there's any other moons around that gas giant. We only know that... It has the forest moon of Endor orbiting around it. So that's pretty much it for the actual canon, for the uh, Star Wars canon that is accepted by, uh, I guess, J.J. Abrams and uh, Disney. And so what we have to do here is we need to place a gas giant and let's just uh, create a random gas giant around these two stars. We're going to place them a little bit farther away. And here is here is where the problem is going to be. Um, in my uh, experience with the universe Sunbox 2 and just in general understanding how orbital dynamics work it is very very difficult for um, a planet to orbit two uh, binary stars as a matter of fact there is only like three planets we've discovered out there in our galaxy that possibly have this orbit now this is actually called uh, P-type orbit and P-type orbits are basically almost impossible to reproduce and I'm gonna try my best to just place it at the right moment so I can possibly make it orbit, but let's see, we may need to balance motion here. And uh, around here we go. Let's actually change its mass to um, uh, about 0.9 masses of Jupiter. Now, I don't know if this is going to... Ooh, this is too much. I don't know if it's going to stay in uh, in this uh, particular orbit, but chances are it's not. And you'll see that um, its orbit is just going to be very unpredictable. Now, um, P orbits are theoretically almost impossible to create. And uh, for for them to occur naturally is very, 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 very unlikely. Although, um, obviously, nothing is impossible. Uh, the other orbits um, in binary system are the ones I've recreated before, and they're, they're actually called... S orbits, S type orbits, that's when uh, there is a binary star system, but what happens here is that the object only orbits one of the stars, and that's actually quite easy to recreate, it's not uh, mathematically impossible, it's actually quite possible, quite feasible, and does happen quite a lot out there, specifically our closest neighbor, um, Alpha Centauri, uh, does have, uh, not binary, but actually triple system, and it's very likely that it does have um, objects flying or orbiting around each one of those uh, stars, each one of the three stars. So S-type orbits are not very unusual, but P-type orbits are just difficult. And if I were to accelerate time here, you would notice that at some point the orbit here would become too unstable and eventually this object would actually escape into the outer solar system just because um, it's just the Barry center there is not uh, very difficult to orbit around and because of the constant motion of these two stars, they do kind of slowly push this object into the outer solar system. But anyway, let's uh, just, because we have a few, at least a few years before that happens, we're going to add the uh, Andor moon or the forest moon of Andor and here we go it doesn't look the same I guess uh, it does have a little bit less water than I wanted to have so let's add a little bit more water and it's not as green unfortunately but that's that's because this was also randomly generated so this is the forest moon of Andor uh, temperature wise it's about this as, as it should be and it's basically orbiting around Andor um, which is a gas giant this is Andor the gas giant and uh, this by itself orbits around the binary star called Andor 1 and Andor 2. Now, this type of orbit actually has a name in uh, astronomy, and this is called circumbinary planet planetary orbit. And uh, circumbinary refers to the fact that there's two stars. And by itself, this is actually a very, very challenging topic mathematically to figure out. And uh, it's actually... Ooh, what's happened to my Andor? No, it's actually, for some reason, it's coming closer to the stars. And I think this is when... Um, it's possibly a limitation of the game or actually a limitation of... The idea of circumbinary uh, uh, navigation, it's just really difficult to place a, a, a star, a planet, or any other object orbiting around a binary star system that has two stars orbiting relatively quickly. And uh, once again, this is actually called a P-type um, orbit. And you can kind of notice that its orbit is actually constantly changing. It's uh, it's it's kind of uh, wiggling around because of the motion of those two stars. So unless the second star is actually significantly smaller and doesn't really affect 
the uh, orbits of other uh, planets orbiting around uh, the system, it would actually most likely not have any bodies orbiting around it. So, which is why um, I personally think that it was a really bad idea for them to include a, a binary star and to basically completely erase the extended universe ideas because there was some really cool stuff going on uh, in the Iblium system uh, that was the previous name of the Endor system and of course uh, removing all of those legends about uh, the sister moon that Evox actually respected quite a lot and a lot of other things including some of the creatures that would be actually absolutely amazing to see one day in one of the future Star Wars video games or Star Wars movies. Well, anyway, so that's pretty much it for Universe Unbox 2, and I just wanted to show you what the surface of this planet looks like in Universe, um, oh, sorry, Star Wars uh, The Battlefront, uh, the game that was released last year. Um, and uh, here, uh, what while you basically watching this kind of a cool scene, I just wanted to briefly mention some of the other cool, cool things from the Legends, not the canon, and one of them was act actually that uh, there used to be people coming to um, the Moon of Andor, and for a very, very funny unusual interesting reason and this reason was because Ewoks, yes Ewoks, uh, the people, the hairy people that destroyed the or helped destroy the shield generator uh, were also famous or popular in the world, in the off-world uh, trade because of their jerky, Ewok jerky. Now we're talking about jerky made out of Ewoks. Yes, people would actually hunt Ewoks and turn them into beef jerky, or I guess Ewok jerky, uh, which was a, a popular snack in uh, in the outer rim of the Star Wars galaxy. I know it sounds strange, I know it sounds kind of gross even, but yes, uh, some people would actually eat them, and despite them being sentient beings, they were actually quite popular in the, in the outer rim worlds, and many people did eat them. And the other interesting fact about uh, this particular uh, planet, or I guess uh, what happened around the planet, after the destruction of the second Death uh, Star, when the Emperor Palpatine actually uh, perished, um, in the extended universe, he didn't die. He actually was able to uh, use a very ancient force technique to send out his spirit to a planet called Bis, where he actually had a hidden temple and a hidden imperial um, fortress where he had extra clones, uh, which he then inhabited and actually used to uh, continuously control the empire. And uh, one day he actually was planning to inhabit a body of one of the Skywalker family. And here, uh, th this was actually in one of the comic books, uh, he tried to inhabit the body of Anakin Solo, uh, the third son of Han Solo and Leia Organa, and he would technically actually be the brother of uh, Kylo Ren that we get to see in uh, the seventh Star Wars episode. But anyway, so when Anakin Solo was still a baby, uh, Emperor Palpatine that was at this point inhabiting the body of uh, a clone uh, actually tried to approach the baby and because nobody really knew who he was, he actually tried to, in a sense, possess the baby with his own spirit and essentially become even more powerful because he would have all of the force powers from the uh, Skywalker family and at the same time would also be able to bring his own knowledge as well. But fortunately for him, Han Solo actually did shoot the clone and as he actually still tried to inhabit the baby, uh, his spirit was captured by another Jedi Knight and then taken into the abyss of the Force where he was trapped for eternity. So this was actually a pretty awesome story in the extended universe that is now technically erased from existence. And so I think, uh, according to the canon, uh, Emperor Palpatine died with the first, or oh, sorry, with the second Death Star, and this is of course because uh, Darth Vader threw him into the power generator where he actually just exploded. Now, anyway, so that's it. I, uh, that's all I wanted to mention about Endor and about some of the stories and history behind it, and also the two different versions of Endor that were that are available to us, and here we're talking about the canon and the legends, and uh, I, personally I kind of like the legends and they're a lot better because it does have a lot of history behind it, whereas uh, the new canon and there does feel a little bit empty, and the fact that it has two binary stars and the planet uh, and or uh, specifically the gas giant and or orbits around them does make it very difficult to recreate in real life. And anywho, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with people that you think like Star Wars, and also like all kinds of space stuff as well. And also like this video if you've enjoyed it, and subscribe if you still haven't. 
check out some of the other Star Wars videos I've made previously and also check out some of the other Universe Sandbox 2 videos as well. And in the next video we're going to talk about another Star Wars planet, another Star Wars universe history and I'll also show you a lot of other awesomeness from the Star Wars galaxy. Thank you for watching, game you later and bye bye.